Hi, I'm Bill Henry. In this video, I will explain the operation and controls of the Chiller Plant Optimizer. I will go display screen by display screen. The typical water-cooled chiller plant shown here consists of one or more of the following, a cooling tower, a chiller, and a condenser water pump. This equipment works together as a system to produce chilled water at about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, there is a distribution system to transport the chilled water to the end user points. The chiller plan optimizer coordinates the three primary elements listed above to produce the chilled water and to obtain the best overall efficiency, which is to say that the efficiency of the equipment is balanced to optimize the system, as opposed to optimizing one or the other component. The CPO is a patented product using a patented method and proprietary algorithms to safely control the condenser water temperature and flow rate for best overall efficiency. It implements proven strategies with automatic real-time control sequences to accomplish its mission. This is a benchtop test stand that allows the Chiller Plan Optimizer software to be tested with a simulator. The simulator can be set up to match various plant configurations. Prior to putting the first prototype in service, it was tested against an autonomous or self-contained simulator similar to this one. Initially, both the CPO and the simulator were built with an embedded PLC, but today each uses a widely available and cost-effective Direct Logic 06 PLC. While the initial Chiller Plan Optimizer had a simple text-based display, the current generation has several options for displays, including a display accessed by a computer browser. In all cases, it is a local system and does not depend on any remote functions or cloud-accessed computer. There are also different options when it comes to input sensors and control outputs to help achieve a cost-effective installation for medium and smaller sized chiller plants. One option includes an 8 inch color display with a VGA screen resolution of 640 by 480 pixels accessible by a computer browser with an Ethernet connection and an IP address assigned to the display you can use your browser and download a screen console to your computer. By clicking on the console icon, it opens up. Then you can enter your username and password. The first screen displayed here identifies the Chiller Plan Optimizer and its US patent number. The first indicator is an analog meter that represents a real-time result for the operating chiller's efficiency. And the second indicator is also an analog meter that tells us the overall plant performance in terms of kW per ton. The bottom left indicator tells us that the condensed water temperature control set point mode is automatic. If we were in manual mode, it would light up in red with a text that tells us that. At the bottom center is a screen selector and one can jump to any screen from here. Then to the right is a selector that either enables the CPO or disables it. This function can be set up to switch to another less automated control situation or even manual control. This is a feature initially included with the first unit, so we just kept it in. By disabling the CPO, it's totally out of the control loop and could be helpful when troubleshooting other aspects of the chiller plant's control. Proceeding to screen two, we can select our control modes. The first selector switch is for condenser water temperature set mode. So I just selected manual mode and we can manually change the fixed temperature set point with 
a numeric pad. The indicator below the temperature mode switch tells us the actual condensed water temperature, which as we see is now changing. When we go back to the first screen, we can see that the indicator now advises that the controller is in manual mode. Back to screen two and the auto mode, we'll go back to the auto mode, and we see the condensed water temperature is adjusting back to the uh, automatic set point. The select second selector switch will determine whether the condensed water flow rate is set at the design flow rate, which is the fixed flow rate, or the variable flow rate. The switch in control mode is an option that many smaller installations will likely to forego. Finally, we have a digital readout to show the actual flow rate with, in this case, the variable flow mode. On to screen three. Here, we are accumulating power usage and savings information. The first indicator is the actual power usage over time, and it shows 327,000 kilowatt hours. Then, we have the baseline usage, which is an estimated power usage without any optimization. And we see it's 409,000 kilowatt hours. And this then is the savings over that same time period. Here we have the elapsed time meter and the time in hours. And finally, we can reset all of this back to zero. This is screen number four and it gives us current power demand of the chillers, the aggregate chiller efficiency, and plant cooling load. The values are calculated from the measured inputs and therefore does not account for dirty chiller barrels or other chiller maintenance issues. Therefore, we have a valuable set of diagnostic tools which can be used to compare with directly measured results using a power meter and a BTU meter on the chilled water supply. Now even with a dirty chiller, the optimization strategies will continue to save actual energy. Screen 5 provides us with a picture of the primary analog outputs and offers us more insight into just what is happening with the system and control. It defines how the control modes interact to deliver balanced overall savings. The analog meters portray the output signals to the cooling tower and fans and condenser water pumps. If the variable flow option is not used, then the pump speed meter will not be shown. We have three different numeric indicators that tell us something about the condenser water temperature. The first indicator tells us the system design temperature. The middle temperature indicator is the operating set point. If the CPO is in manual mode, then this will match the manual set point of screen number two. If the CPO is in auto mode, then the calculated operating set point will be shown here. The third temperature indicator is the actual condensed water temperature. Normally, this temperature will match the middle indicator unless cooling tower relief has been implemented. In that case, the actual temperature will be anywhere between the set point temperature and some higher temperature, but never above the design temperature. There is an indicator button to the right of the fan speed analog meter. This button will light up to indicate that cooling tower relief has been activated. So this will help to explain the actual condenser water temperature. Here is screen six where the digital outputs are represented. The cooling tower can be controlled by variable or digital outputs, depending on the system design options. There are seven fan speeds per cooling tower, 
and also three indicator lights which gives us a representation of the digital output. These screens and the two following screens are provided primarily as tools to use during the initial installation and setup of the CPO. Screen 7 gives us the raw input values for any analog input and screen 8 describes the digital inputs. Screens 9, 10, and 11 give us a partial picture of the trend data that is available to be either directly downloaded or accessible by a removable USB flash drive. Trend data in its raw form is shown here and it can be imported into a spreadsheet so that you can evaluate it. Just a final note. The Chilopan optimizer is designed so that with adequate information it can be pre-customized to match any plant configuration at the factory before it is installed on site. It has various options so that a basic model is available for even the simplest single chiller plant and still be priced for a cost-effective application. While operating the chiller with condensed water reset will provide less strain on the compressor and could prolong its life, the primary claim is to save energy. Therefore, we realize that it is necessary to provide a cost-effective system with a quick payback to enhance your bottom line.